Hey fam, I hope you're all doing well. If you head to the link in my bio, you'll be able to download a Meditation 101 PDF work booklet. So pretty much the, the, the booklet just gives you tools, techniques, and hot tips to developing your own heartwarming, nourishing, and sustainable meditation practice. So pretty much with anything, right? If we want to add a new activity into our life or we want to create a new healthy habit, we need to do the same activity over and over and over again, right? So for example, like if we want to be more healthy or we want that, that strong, hot body, then we've got to start changing up our eating habits and getting into the routine of going to the gym, right? And the more and more times we do something, the more, the more they become a very automatic subconscious behavior. It becomes a habit. So this is exactly what we want to do with our meditation practice. And I teach a three-step system um, in, in, my, in my workshops. And the first is to just choose a meditation and stick with it, right? So there's hundreds of meditations out there, and thank goodness there are, because they're not all going to connect with us. So, but what I'm finding with my clients and people that come to my workshop is that they're constantly, you know, just dipping their toes into this meditation or, you know, not, or just constantly changing and never actually giving the meditation the time it needs to really feel if it actually connects with us and it helps to quietening our minds. And so whatever meditation you choose, make sure it has a very strong anchor point. By an anchor point, I mean by a mantra or a breath or something that allows the prefrontal cortex to hone in and to hook in and to concentrate into. So I'll talk a little about our uh, anchor points in a bit. So there's heaps in my PDF. Um, there's also heaps on YouTube, heaps in books, but choose the meditation and stick with it for at least 40 days. So in neuroscience and in Kundalini Yoga, they say it takes 40 days to kick a habit and 40 days to start a new habit. So choose a meditation and stick with it, guys. The second tip is to choose a location to meditate at. And when you choose a location, you know, create, a, create an altar or a prayer table and deck the altar and the prayer table out with things that really connect with you and that are really meaningful to you. So if you are... If you follow a particular god or goddess, then choose a figure like God, like Jesus, Buddha, Mother Mary, whoever, Durga G, and place that on, on your altar. You know, deck, deck it out with incense, with candles. If you like nature, maybe flowers. If you like the ocean, maybe shells. But really deck the area out with things that really entice the senses and that draw you in and that, you know, make you want to sit there. Um, and also when we sit at the same location and you know do some type of prayer or some type of spiritual activity we build this beautiful spiritual meditative aura and energy um, ar around that space and even that in itself draws us in and we know then that when we're here we're here to meditate at so we're really building that energy it's so beautiful i, I love this i love this tip um, the third tip is to Choose a time, guys, and stick with it, right? So when you're beginning meditation, I recommend just 20 minutes a day, and it's so sustainable. It's like 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening, but choose a time and stick with it maybe as, as soon as you get up as well. So I like to meditate quite early in the morning between um, 3.30 and 4, so I choose a time and I stick with it. And this three-step system is so important because we don't want to give the mind too much time to mind wander, right? We want to set the mind up for success. We know our routine. So as soon as we get up in the morning and we're kind of floundering, we don't know what meditation we're going to choose, then it's so easy for the mind to just like kind of grab our phone and go to Instagram or check our messages or whatever. We want our routine. We want to set the mind up for success. So... As soon as you get up, the mind knows exactly the meditation it's got to do. It knows exactly the exact location. It knows the exact time. So by anchor points, I mean by, you know, um, strong kind of points that allow the prefront prefrontal cortex to hone in and to focus in on. And by an anchor point, I'm being by like a mantra meditation. I love mantras like Soham or Om, um, even Mala beads, very strong anchor point. So you're saying the same mantra as you're um, going through each of the 108 mala beads. Another powerful anchor point is putting your palms and focusing on the rising and the falling of the belly with each inhale and with each exhale. This is one of my favorites. Um, another powerful anchor point is the breath, right? There's hundreds of different pranayamas out there. 
So breath is a very beautiful meditation because the breath is internal. And just by focusing on the breath, we're drawing our senses internally in, into self. So I've got, I've got a few on my PDF. There's heaps on my IGTV. There's heaps on YouTube. Guys, choose one and stick with it. Um, and so it's actually the anchor point, right? That leads to the progressive silencing of the thought streams, right? So every time we hone in on the anchor point and we catch that our mind's attention has wandered off into, you know, our to-do list or what our mother-in-law said to us like two years ago, as soon as we become aware and we lasso our mind's attention and we anchor it back into the anchor point, meaning the mantra or the rising and the falling of the belly, then we're literally strengthening our prefrontal cortex and working it out like a muscle. And that's why meditation is so powerful for you know, uni students or for those that are indulging in study or for writing a books or for entrepreneurs or whatever, because you're strengthening, focus, you're strengthening your ability to focus and hone in on, on the task. So we're catching our mind's attention, bringing it back, catching our mind's attention, bringing it back. So in a meditation practice, our mind's attention isn't on the thought streams, right? It's honed in and it's hooked in into the anchor point. So naturally, this leads to the natural progressive silencing of the thought streams because our mind's attention isn't on the thought streams, right? We're focused on the anchor point. And so our thoughts are still there, but they come like, like background noise. We begin to develop a very new relationship with these thoughts. And in that new relationship is literally liberation from suffering because we get to see them in a very new light. We get to see them, the truth of what they actually are, right? And just this realization of we aren't our thoughts, we don't have to believe our thoughts, is, is literally the greatest gift that we can bless our lives with, especially when thoughts are the cause for all or for most of our suffering, especially living us, especially us living in the West. To realize that we don't have to believe our thoughts is literally liberation from suffering. And it's the greatest gift that I've blessed my life with, especially when thoughts create the emotional state. Because then we get to think, well then, what thoughts do I want to indulge in that will improve my quality of life and that will add to my joy and add to my peace. And that's where I phone in and that's where I focus my awareness um, and I ignore the thoughts that don't. So it's actually the anchor point that leads us then into the, into the state of presence, into the state of stillness, right? Because the thoughts naturally become quiet and quiet as our focus and our attention strengthens, which is the prefrontal cortex. So please let me know if you have any questions, um, hit me up with any messages you might have and enjoy your meditation guys, a rock on.